Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Protection and Policy Committee for uh, June 10th, 2019, uh, room 207, is now in session. Uh, roll call we have Alder Stevens. Here. Alder Vanderlees. Here. Alder Stoyer. Here. And myself, Alder Scano. I'll take a motion to approve our agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Vanderlees, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, that carries unanimously. I'll uh, take a motion to approve. Well, wait a minute. Am I yeah, going? we're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. i got to remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take a motion to approve our minutes for May 13th, 2019. Motion, motion approved by Alder Stevens. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Our minutes from our last meeting are approved. On to regular business. Consideration with possible action on appeal by Everett Butzing. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, 1621 14th Avenue regarding his dog Henry being declared dangerous. Uh, this is a quasi judicial hearing. Uh, I don't know if anyone, any party wants us to go into closed session, we can do that. Otherwise, we'll just proceed. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Officer Mavis, please. Yeah. Before we move forward, um, because it, it is quasi-judicial, I just kind of wanted to go over what the procedure is just so that everybody is, is aware. Um, the police department and the appellant will have an opportunity to present evidence, including testimony. Um, evidence <coughs> needs to be credible, relevant, and probative. Uh, you may establish time uh, limits if the committee so chooses. The committee may ask questions of both parties during or after the presentation of evidence. Um, every uh, witness has to be sworn, sworn in. in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, and the uh, police department will present first, um, and then <coughs> the floor will have to be open for any witnesses to present after. Yep. The appellant will present second. Um, you can admit exhibits into the record. Um, you would take a motion to admit, identify the evidence, and then admit it into the record. Um, then the committee will deliberate, and um, then the committee will recite their findings of fact, conclusions of law, and state for the record what the decision of the committee is and the basis of the decision. And that's it. Yep. Okay. I think so. Please raise your uh, upper arm there, one of them. <laughs> uh, do you solemnly swear the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you out. <coughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> did you receive the packet? Yes, we okay. did. Okay. Fantastic. Um, to kind of give you just a, a brief um, background on this, uh, on April 19th um, at around 11 a.m., um, there was an incident where a dog from 1621 14th Avenue was loose off property and had attacked uh, a woman and her leashed dog um, at that time. Um, animal control interns along with community service interns were dispatched at that time. Um, I ended up discovering the incident a few days after and um, I looked at the injuries of the photographs and I'm like a citation needs to be issued. The severity um, of the extent of the injuries was quite significant. Um, and there were multiple violations. So at that time, um, I had issued an animal violation notice to the owner, um, who was identified as Everett Butzin or Butzin, uh, over at that address on 14th. Um, he has a tan pitbull mixed dog named Henry that he adopted from the Oshkosh Humane Society, I think around February of this past year. I advised him um, that his dog was involved in a, in a um, an attack to a woman and her leash dog um, while at the intersection of Liberty and 14th Avenue resulting in injuries and that he was responsible for any medical bills and veterinary bills that were sustained as a result of that incident. Um, I explained that um, the criteria is met for a dangerous dog at that time um, but would not be considering that just maybe it's a fluke accident kind of thing and he would be cited accordingly. Um, I also advised him to obtain a city dog license by May 23rd because he was not compliant with that per our city ordinance. Um, so the, the license was an issue, um, animal running at large, animal unattended within five feet of a public right of way, which is a sidewalk, a street, or an alley, and um, explained that to him. Uh, he, at that time, uh, when I spoke with him over the phone, advised me that I believe his sister he used the name Aspen, um, had the dog at that time and did not have control of the animal. He was not home at the time of the incident. Um, 
just documented it with a police report, um, issued multiple citations, and the dog went on a home quarantine because it did have its rabies shots. So um, another incident actually happened a month to the day, May 19th, um, <coughs> and uh, an Officer Canty at that time was dispatched to the same intersection um, for another incident where this dog bolted out of a garage door, I guess service door if you might, um, and ran after a woman with her leash dog walking through the same intersection and uh, ended up attacking her and her dog. Uh, it sounds like some of these injuries were sustained as a result of the owner trying to intervene. It appears that the dog has some issues with other smaller dogs and does not respect the boundaries. Um, again, her injuries were quite significant uh, as well as her dog. The first dog that was attacked was a Shih Tzu mixed dog, had a tooth having to be extracted, um, some punctures, um, and the second dog I believe was like a Basset, Basset mix. Um, also sustained some in injuries, uh, puncture wounds. Both dogs had to be treated at the uh, Green Bay Animal Referral Center. Um, both victims had to get medical treatment at a hospital. So following that incident, um, the officer had actually ordered uh, a home quarantine, but according to our policy, any second and subsequent bites have to be quarantined in an isolation facility. So I did make contact with the dog owner, Everett, at that time and said, hey, the dog has to go to the Humane Society, who is our contracted um, holder at that time, to finish its quarantine from there. And then I did declare the dog dangerous based on the two different attacks that we've had while loose off property. Um, and Officer Canty at that time had issued Everett a citation for dangerous dog. Um, I believe last Monday was actually the court hearing for the <coughs> citations issued in April, and he did not show up for court. Um, as of this time, um, to the best of my knowledge, no city license has been obtained. Um, I did inquire with the city clerk's office, I believe, on the 6th of June. I also inquired with both victims. Uh, neither victim has been reimbursed for their medical bills or their animals' veterinary bills that have accumulated. Um, I also reached out to the Oshkosh Humane Society to gather some information on the dog, and they advised that, um, I spoke with one of the dog trainers, her name was Carrie, I believe, Tetzloff. She said that she spent a year and a half working with the dog. The dog could not um, be respectful of other dogs' boundaries and had issues, and it was recommended that I go to a, you know, one dog only home. Um, and she said that based on her recommendations, given the history of this, um, that she recommended that the dog actually go back to their facility to be humanely euthanized. So that's, that's her professional recommendation on that. Um, and uh, I did get um, personal injury photographs and a statement from one of the victims. This would be the incident that happened April 19th. Um, she completed this. I do have here. Um, I'm not sure if any of the victims are present here today or not. Some. Was this yes, I have it in color. If you'd like to see that as well. It's color in the. Yeah. Yeah. So I see. They're pretty. They're pretty gruesome. Yeah. They're pretty gruesome. Um, and basically, what this comes down to is that there's just lack of control. There's lack of control. Um, Everett did advise that he had the dog transferred down to Plymouth, Wisconsin, for some aggression dog aggression training. The dog's been through a year and a half of shelter training with one of their canine handlers. And I don't believe that the dog's gonna benefit from any additional training. I do believe that these incidences could have been prevented if the dog was just simply under control. Okay. So. Any questions? <coughs> so I guess you answered one question, Mallory, as far as uh, the medical costs and the vet costs that they haven't been reimbursed. What what was that? Did, do you have a number on that as far as when? Um, I it do. Yep, it's in there. <coughs> but, but I just throw for the record. Sure. Right. Um, I just have to refer to this here. She did indicate um, the Aurora invoice was five hundred forty-one dollars. Um, I'm assuming out of pocket was three hundred ninety for the first victim. The veterinary fees were one hundred three ninety-four. Um, I believe that was for the Green Bay Animal Referral Center. Um, I'm not sure if any additional follow-up with care was required from the, the primary veterinarian that they see. Um, there was also um, prescriptions that were obtained and that was for the first victim. Um, I don't have the cost amount for the second victim. I believe she was waiting for her insurance to come through. Thank you. 
Okay. For the uh, first victim, uh, we have no photos of the, what did you describe? The first victim, those are the photographs that oh, you the have. the second one then? The second, the second one, one um, there should be photographs in the case that were sent. She sustained injuries to her hand. Okay. And uh, she may be here today. Ah, I'm not okay. sure. Susan? Uh, we'll, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Yep. <coughs> uh, it'd be now uh, the plaintiff turn to uh, respond. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And then there, there should be a motion to open the floor. I'll so make a motion to open the floor. Mm -hmm. Motion to open the floor by Elder Stoyer. Sorry. Second by Elder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The floor is now open for uh, is it Nancy Navrosky. Oh, I'm sorry, no, we want, uh, it's, a, it's a plaintiff here? Oh, plaintiff, plaintiff, right, yes, please. It's okay. The plaintiff is not here? That is. Okay. Hmm. No one's here for, well then. I, I think we could wrap this up pretty quick. If um, at that point, I think I would I would advise that we adjourn and hold this for another to have the plaintiff have an opportunity to come and re-notice the situation. That is what we've done in the past. Um, okay. Because this is, we want to ensure that due process is given to the property owner because <coughs> we would be essentially taking the property away. Okay. When we... Uh, and we want to hold it towards the end of the meeting, but I understand that we have staff here. Right, and I'm assuming <coughs> perhaps he's not going to do. Uh, if we could reach out and uh, also notify him that we'll, we've, hold, we've held it, and that uh, if he's going to, uh, to let the clerk's office know. Yeah, so that if he's not, we can let everybody know, and we can just deal with it. But yes, we open the floor. So go ahead. Can I just say that he has moved out of the house that he was living in? And it was rather sudden. Sorry, anything that we, we would need to reopen Swear. the floor. Which we never closed it. Yeah, right, so Did she, she just needs to be sworn in oh. if she's presenting any evidence. All right, well, all right. Well, uh, Motion open the floor. If she does, she's sworn in. We have closed it. No, the, the floor is open. Yeah. So the floor just needs to be sworn in. Right, then, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh -huh. Okay, so please raise whatever hand you like. Uh, you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, so thank you. Back. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Nancy Kraski, 930 Liberty Street, Green Bay. Okay. I just want to state that <coughs> I was half a block away from this dog and on the other side of the street, and the dog came tearing out and it attacked me twice that I fell on the ground and had my whole eye injured yep, and we saw the pictures. I had surgery. Yep. But he has moved out since, and it was a, a very fast move. It was like on a Sunday, and the mailman was coming to my house, and there was no delivery on Sunday. And I thought, why is he coming? He had no package. And he knocks on my door, and he said, just so you know, those people are moving out. They moved out within a matter of a day, so they're not there anymore. Okay. So there's no, no idea where they're at right no. now? No. So they yeah. could still be in Green Bay, you know, and the dog could hurt someone else. Right. So we need to, so to see if we can contact that. them, see if we can find them, and uh, mm -hmm. if they're within the city, we need to enforce. Mm -hmm. We need to contact them that we're going to still, we've held this meeting, if, are they going to defend it? If not, uh, they need to take care of the Lieutenant dog. Mahoney just stepped out to try and see if he can contact or have shift command contact the, or the, the plaintiff to okay. see if they're planning to attend, but at this point I would recommend to, to hold until the next meeting just to give the clerk's office another opportunity to notice. Yep. Um, and then at that time, the committee can come to a decision. Do you have a question? I just have a quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is the dog right now? Well, well we don't with, we the, don't know. with the owner. All right. So, yeah. okay, I, I thought maybe it was a facility of some sort for now. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, now we'll take a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Elder Stoyer. Second by Elder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to hold this. That's, That's what we need to do. Well, motion, motion to hold. Appropriate second. procedure. Alder motion to hold by Elder Stoyer. Second. Oh, yep. Just a question for Joanna. Joanna, I mean, was, was uh, were they properly noticed that the hearing was occurring today? The the appellant, the plaintiff, is the one that requests the hearing. 
Um, so he <coughs> sent in a, a hearing and then it was confirmed with him by the clerk's office when that hearing was going to be. Because so <coughs> this doesn't autom the hearing doesn't automatically get scheduled. It only gets scheduled if the owner requests said hearing. So how so would they have been notified? Um, I believe in writing by the clerk's office. Of course, they moved. So they moved. So, I mean, who knows? So, the decision, the decision of this group is this the final decision, or does this get advanced to council for? Um, I believe this gets Before advanced to council. So, this would go to council. I mean, I, I, I guess I, I don't know. I mean, if they knew that this was occurring today and they were sent the notification and they are not here, I would be personally, I'd be obliged to just. Uh, make the decision and, and move on and if they want to appeal could they still not have that opportunity for due process with the full council um council then acts on the report and the findings of, of the community. right and we really don't, don't have much. report. right but they, i mean they weren't robbed of due process they had the right but i mean if they showed up if they showed up at council we basically have to do committee work on the floor we would be doing a trial on the f what we should be doing here. It's an if, but at that time, you could refer it back at that time. No. Okay. I would say that they would have cause for complaint because I sat in this committee for two years and it happened before, and we always gave them another opportunity, opportunity. to have the hearing. Yeah. We didn't ever just have the hearing without them. So it would be I would, it would be different than our past practice if we suddenly this time said, no, we're not going to let them have another chance. With a situation like this, these dog situations are super touchy. We usually give them that one more chance. I'm just telling you what past practice Yep, yep, man. Mm -hmm. And Randy knows, because yep. he was on that committee too. Yep. And, I, and I get the past practice piece, but I guess I, I don't feel like due process has been has been removed for the individual. <coughs> um, and unless Lieutenant Mahoney, perhaps, yeah. if were you able to reach them on the phone? No. Nope. I left him a message to call or text me if he gets my voicemail message. Yeah. And wasn't able to get a hold of yeah. Yeah. Can I say so? He, he works for the. Uh, uh, we, need, we would need to open the floor I again. Need to ca I, I didn't catch the vote. I don't think we. We, we didn't vote. The motion to close. Oh, uh, didn't we? Yeah, was I made a motion to close. Didn't we vote on it? We voted. Uh, we voted. Yeah, we voted, in, but then I. Yeah, we, we, vote, we closed the floor. It was unanimous. Uh, it was. Uh, right, I did Motion by Elder Stoyer, seconded okay. by Elder Stevens. To close. Stevens. It was the same to open. Reopen if you need. Oh, it was the motion to hold. I'm sorry. That I didn't catch. Okay. So if you wanted to reopen the floor, you could do that now. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. If you want to please step up and give your name and address. And, but first, let's swear you in, whichever arm. Uh, you promise to uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, Susan McClure, I'm the second victim. I live at 878 Waverly. Um, I have a friend that works in this building. He also works in this building, the owner of the dog. He works for the Builder Building Commission, I believe she said. She was oh. introduced to him a few weeks ago. He works for the city? We do not have a Building Commission. Um, let me just see real quick what she said. The planning to administer a housing program she wor he works for. Could he be on the plan? Could be a private. Yeah. I don't know. She was introduced to him a few weeks ago. He, he works in this building. From what she said. Well, hopefully well, that will make him easier to track so down. That's, if that's you know, true. That's why I just wanted we to can look into that, that to make sure. No? No? Yeah. Okay. We'd have a list of all okay. that. Yeah. She, she, works but she, she did, it was introduced, but yeah. I guess I just want to say, like, I've, I've been around dogs my entire life. There was nothing nice about this dog. It's scary to think that it could be in another residential neighborhood right now. Yeah, that's we got to make sure that they have moved out of the city if they've moved. I mean, it's even scared to think it could be in DPR Howard. Oh. That's that's out of our jurisdiction, unfortunately. Scares me. I mean, but, if, uh, if but I'm just saying that's how this dog. I have, I'm the owner. We have a 90 pound pit bull at home. That's the biggest baby ever. Like this this dog was it was pure kill. That's all I was out to do. There was no stiff, no tail wag. It just went to kill. And thank God, I was there to save my dog, but. I just wanted to make that clear that this there's nothing nice about this dog. Okay, thank you. Okay. Questions or anything? No. Okay. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Vanderlees. All in favor? Aye. 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 Floor is now closed. Uh, motion to hold. I made that motion. Oh uh, yes, you did. Was it that seconded? Motion by Alder Stoyer to hold, and seconded by Alder Stevens. That we did not vote on. 
I don't think there's any need for further discussion. Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. We'll hold that, see if we can't track down Mr. Puccini. Puccini, maybe it's Italian. <coughs> All right. Uh, consideration with possible action on appeal by Eric Chang at 830 Howard Street regarding invoice 1900-1317. Uh, but first we'll get staff's uh, input on this and then I'll open the floor. Okay. okay. Yep. Staff? So um, my... We received communication from the attorney for the, so we're on number two, correct? Correct. Um, we received information from the attorney for um, the appellant that he wished to have this item held until the next meeting because he had a conflict oh. and wasn't able to attend to the meeting. We can do that. We can hold it. Yep. Motion. Motion. Motion by Elder Story to hold. Second by all the we're gonna just hold the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all the stuff away. Yeah. Uh motion by all the story to hold, second by all the All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that item is held. So uh, so um, you contact attorney for that. Should I want to motion all mm -hmm. for the date? Uh it'll go through, yep, you'll be contacted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It'll basically be one month from now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh item number mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. Consideration with possible action on request by tenant LLC at 2475 West Mason Street to amend their license premises <coughs> to include an exterior patio terrace space and to allow a waiver in the requirement of the ordinance for fencing. Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final authority on liquor license related matters until October 1st, 2019. So we're the final say on this. Yeah, we are. Uh, staff? Yes. So a uh, law department has no objections. Um, we do want to <coughs> note that the appellant is requesting an outdoor patio that doesn't have um, fencing. a traditional fencing. Um, they've met with staff and have presented that their plans include um, <coughs> like a, a build up um, patio essentially that does create a delineation and a boundary around the patio. So it should be clear to both patrons and law enforcement as to what is licensed premise and what is not licensed. Right, correct. Oh, um, I believe it's 16 inches. I do believe the, the okay. licensee, the applicant is here, so you can ask him questions directly. Um, so, but we feel that it would satisfy at least the, the, the spirit of the ordinance and that it, it's, it's um, delineating the boundary. However, I will need a waiver, and this is up for final approval mm -hmm. with PMP. Mm -hmm. um, so we would need a waiver by well, two thirds, essentially, of, of the committee in order to approve it, um, waiving the um, waiving the ordinance requirements and approving as proposed. So an example motion would be to recommend to waive the ordinance requirements for an outdoor license premise and to approve the proposed outdoor premise as presented. Okay. Anything from the police? The police have no issues. We concur with the law. Okay. Actually, the owners here. Are there questions? Do we have questions? Does there anybody have questions for the owner? Motion to approve. Motion to approve uh, suspending the uh, ordinance and approving the extension. As proposed. As proposed, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So by Alder Vanderlees. Second. Second for Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you, Jim. Yep. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I should have let that, everybody that know. That item will not go to council. Oh, so that's oh this one, yeah, this one's not approved. But I should let everybody right, know about correct. the other ones. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So, uh, unless I, we the, co the council has uh, given the committee final authority on an issue, which you did on this last item, but I think that might be the only one. I will certainly mention the, it if right. your item falls in that category. Mm -hmm. Everything we do here is just a recommendation to council. Yeah. Council has a final say, which will be two weeks. First. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, at 7 o'clock in the room next door. So if you don't like our decision, you can always appeal to the entire council. But your item, sir, was final. 6 o'clock, I'm sorry. Thank Understood, you. yes. So the, the liquor portion of the programming, final. Yes. Uh, clarification mm -hmm. effective immediately. Wait, Since it's wait, like wait, wait, wait. Time time out, time out. Time open the floor. Open the floor. Motion open the floor. Second. 
Motion moved and by Alder Steuer, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. okay. Did you fill out a. I did. You got okay, it. your name and address. Jason please? Campbell, 3585 Blackberry. Yeah. Uh, the owner, and I just clarifying since this is already an existing license and ex the extension to the patio space effective immediately. Um. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we have the final, final authority, so understood. Yes. All right. So once the license is is amended and issued, then you physically have to have understood. Right. Yep. So talk to the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Certainly. Yep. Just a quick question. So oh. the, the, anything as far as permits oh. or anything like that? No, no I'm I sorry. believe he that that's with, with planning yep. that's a separate right. issue. But I believe he's been working with planning on having all of his permits and, okay. and um, getting his certificate of occupancy and all that. So anyway. All right. He has to pass inspections before yes. the license can be physically issued to him. Okay. So once he's passed, then then the clerk's office can physically hand him his license. Oh, yep. I'm sure we're on that. Oh yeah, very yeah. much. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Motion to Don't close the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderlee. So in favor. Aye. 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 Floor is now closed. And we've already did we already vote on this? Yes. So. so this was a open and close. Open and close. Okay. Number four. <coughs> Consideration with possible action on request by 304 North Adams Green Bay LLC at 304 North Adams Street to amend their liquor license to include outdoor seating serving in the city right of way. The Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final th approval authority on liquor license related matters until October 1st, 2019. So if we agree to this, it will be final tonight. Uh, staff? No objections. Please concur. Motion, Motion to approve by Alder Steuer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay. Number five. <coughs> Consideration with possible action on request by Richard Craniums at 840 South Broadway to temporarily extend their license premises to their parking lot on June 13th, 16th, 20th, 23rd, 27th, 30th. July 4th, 7th, 11th, 14th, 18th, 21st, 25th, 28th, and August 1st, 4th, 8th, 11th, 15th, 18th, 22nd, 25th, and 29th, and September 1st. Uh, the Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final approval authority on liquor license related matters on until October 1st, 2019. So again, we have the final authority on this one. And staff? Uh, law Department has no objections. Uh, we just want to make sure there's adequate security and fencing or people out there to make sure it's alcohol's not being passed out of the parking lot or <coughs> underage drinking. Yep. So is there someone here for this? Anyone here for this no. item? And I thought there was uh, <coughs> someone. I don't think there was anybody. No? We're pretty confident, obviously. Wow. I had some questions, but I don't know. It just seemed like, well, like granted, that it's for a cornhole tournament, is that what it is, or area? That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So it'll be outdoors. You've got a lot of dates outdoors, you know, and I'm just, <coughs> any concerns by neighbors? I realize where the bar is, but, you know, anything at all where there might be some issue with noise or other things. I don't know. But on Adams, right? No, this is Richard Premium. Oh, so oh. 840 South, South Broadway. Broadway. Broadway, Broadway, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, I know the area a little bit, and I, so I, I don't know if that would be much of an issue, but I just kind of wanted to talk to the owner and find mm -hmm. out about that. And if you have no problem with it, police, I mean. We have no legal objection to well, it. No, no legal. It's, it's more, we usually defer to PD on that because of a community impact um, issue. Of course, look, this is kind of time sensitive. It's already June, what? I got six the, Yeah, the 13th is, is two, the two, three days from now. Yeah. There, there are a lot of events and we realize that I guess there might be some inconvenience to neighbors if they do get noisy. I guess it's something that we would monitor and if they're out there and they are causing a disturbance then we would act appropriate like we would any other time. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know, I just feel uncomfortable. I, I kind of, you know, I probably would have approved it if, if the owner was here. We can just talk about it, but I, you know. You could hold it. I mean, they'd lose out on a date or two, but there's a lot of them. <coughs> well, I think it, it's just common sense or, or respect.
respect to come before the committee and ask that. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, so I'll, if that's the case, what did Well, we're having another meeting uh, June 24th, so that's another opportunity potentially. So we're going to miss a couple. <coughs> yeah, they'll miss a couple. Just ask the committee what they think. I, well, I'm, I'm a little. Motion to hold. Motion to hold. Uh, and just tell we could do it at our special meeting. Okay. If need be. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Everyone knows about the special meeting. Mm -hmm. Special. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion hold by Alder Stevens. Would they miss any dates? They're gonna miss a. Uh, yeah, they'll miss they like miss four of them at least. One, two, four. Huh? That's two her. But well, yeah, all the twenty-seven. Yeah. 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 Ye
of this month. Yeah. And then, and then, and then to, hold the to rest. Make sure that we have it stated for the record which ones are being approved and yep. which ones are being held until the 24th. Okay. Yeah. Can I, so would that be a reasonable compromise? Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. I'd amend the motion. Okay. Thank you. So the choose. motion is to amend it that we approve June 13th, 16th, 20th, and 23rd. And we hold the remainder of the events until our special uh, meeting on the 24th. Okay, uh, all this, uh, uh, so moved by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's usually at these meetings. Oh, you know what? I think I got an email from him saying that uh, he wouldn't be able to make it. Okay. That could be. Well, this that was a week ago or something. Well, we can. But, yeah, whatever. We can have another chat. Yeah. All right. <coughs> okay. This has been a really interesting meeting. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, item number six, consideration of possible action on request by Green Bay Sports Service, Inc. at 1265 Lombardi Avenue to temporarily extend their license premises to the parking lot on September 14th, 2019 uh, for a one-day special event. And I take it since that's in September, we are not the final authority on this one. Uh, no. Right. There's no October. So, yep, this, this will go to council. Mm -hmm. uh, staff? Um, law department has no objection. Our same concern was to make sure there is adequate people and checking of IDs since we'll be on the parking lot. Have they had, they've had uh, other events though, haven't they? Yes. So have their track records good? Yes. Uh, we don't have any concerns. We just pretty much wanted on the record that they're mm -hmm. go, going to make sure that they'll properly check IDs, <coughs> that they've been trained to do that. Well, can we, if we approve this, to make sure that they they're aware of that? You know, I mean, it's like right. But if we approve it, there's no. I mean, I'm I'm not well, worried. Well, the committee but with the committee, but I'm just saying, if it goes to council, then if you have any questions at that time, then you could bring it up, maybe. Right, because this will go to council. Council, right. this so will go to council. Is there anybody here? No. Yes. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's been so lenient. Motion on the floor. Motion on the floor, Jay. Our fault. Yeah. My fault. No problem. Sorry. Motion on the floor by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Please state your name and address. Eric. You, you have, this isn't the oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to swear. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Eric Babcook, uh, Assistant General Manager for Green Bay Sports Service. Okay. And uh, staff had uh, I'm assuming like in the past everyone's trained. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody has to be surf safe trained um, before they work uh, any event that we have in Lambeau Fier Field or out in the parking lot. So same same thing. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? No. Motion to close the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the floor by Motion. Alder Stoyer, Motion seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, gentlemen, what would you like to do? Motion, to Motion to approve by Alder Vanderly, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, this will go to council, but I'm sure by the 14th you'll be rocking and rolling. Thank you very much. Uh, item number seven. One second. Yep. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Consideration with possible action on a request by Pepper at 114 South Broadway to temporarily extend their license premises to the parking lot on June 22nd. 2019 for a charity event. The Protection of Policy Committee has been granted final approval authority on liquor license related matters until October 1st, 2019. So we do have final approval on this one. Mm -hmm. Staff? Uh, law department has no objections. Our same concern, just making sure that there's people yeah. are adequate security so the well call's not passed out. Is there anyone here for this item? Any concerns? We've, oh, we've never had issues with them. But it'd be like anything else, the police are aware of it. I suppose somebody would be checking out there. Correct. Okay. Motion to approve. Yeah. Motion to approve by Alder Vanderleest. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously.
Good. Number eight, consideration with possible action on a change of agent by Quick Trip 115 at Quick Trip 115. Okay, I get it now. At 515 West Walnut Street. Uh, staff. Law Department has no objection. Please concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Number nine, consideration as possible action on a change of agent by Aardvark Wine Lounge LLC at 304 Pine Street for the 2019-2020 license year. Staff? Law Department has no objections. Please concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Sawyer. Second. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. All together now? All together now. Yeah. 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 Good show, sir. Number 10, consideration with possible action, renewal application for a Class B combination license by Aardvark Wine Lounge, LLC at 304 Pine Street for the 2019-2020 license year, pending the approval of the change of agent at the June 18th Common Council meeting. Actually, Is this? No. we just did that, correct? Um, oh, no, it's not. That was change of agent. Agent, okay, yeah. so that's yeah. the final authority. Okay, right. 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 <laughs> okay, so staff? A law department has no objection. Please concur. Motion approved. Motion approved by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Go. Number 11, consideration with possible action on the renewal applications for various liquor and or beer licenses for the 2019-2020 license year. Staff? Um, law department has no objections. Please concur. That was a long no objection. Yeah, <laughs> I'm making the sure suspense. I have the right, the suspense. I'm the right item in my notes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, motion approved by Alder Vanderleest. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Oh. Number 12. <coughs> Consideration of possible action and appeal by Roberto. Ray Boyedo, regarding the denial of his operator license. The Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final approving the authority on liquor license related matters until October 1st, 2019. So this is one where we have final authority again. Uh, staff? Uh, Law Department recommends denial on this appeal as the applicant is a convicted felon and habitual law offender for offenses that substantially relate to the license activity. I believe you have the denial memo listing all of the applicable offenses. Yep. We concur with law. Okay. Right. Uh, I'll make a motion open the floor. There is someone here for this. Yep. I believe so. Yep. Okay. Motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Please state your name and address. Hi, uh, I'm Roberto Rebolletto, 1971 Manitowoc Road, Green Bay, Department 24. Okay. Um, what do you um, have to say? I had contacted Green Bay Police Department in regards to supposed OWI felony arrest, and they told me that it was out of Shawano County. I then went to Shawano County to look at my criminal record from them, and I have a statement here stating that under their, I gave it to the clerk of office. I have a, I believe you have a copy of that. In stating that I do not have any criminal record inside of their county or jurisdiction whatsoever. Um, and that I need to come back to you guys, Green Bay side, and say where is this coming from because I am not a felon. I've never once been through any of the course of actions that normal felony OWI people would be required to go through. So I'm kind of wondering. I, I, I'm wondering too. Where, where, I'm hoping where, where, where and what what is going on with it? That's okay. I mean, I, I brought my U.S. passport and a federally issued ID to Shawano County to verify my identity and who I am and. And they wrote a letter. And they, yep, like I said, it's. So long here? Yep. To whom it may concern, upon the request of the above named Roberto Robelledo. Close enough. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I've heard <laughs> it. He's <laughs> not yeah, done yeah, my entire yeah. life. I have completed a record search for the Shano County Circuit Court and do not find any criminal court record charges for that individual. I have verified his identity through both driver's license and U.S. passport. Our records have been computerized since 1993, so any court proceedings. The, all these listed are much later. 
Uh, whether criminal or civil would be able to be located through a simple name search. Anything prior to that date would require reviewing a court paper index. Any further questions, feel free to contact me at the above number. Uh, yours truly, Susan M. Kruger, Shano Country Clerk of Court. So where did we get all this? Oh, it's it, it, uh, you search the cap and the birthday and the applicant's name listed in the applicant. That was what was searched by PD in their background. I've got full record on my CCAP search right here if you guys like to go over that. Okay, yeah, because there does, there is Brown County There's listed also in the, Green Bay the Municipal criminal Court. Background, the it's CID, not just Shano. Which, which I've, I've the got it all. Oh, okay. I've got, I've got Green Bay's and I've got Brown County and I've got Shano County's. Okay. Okay. I can so. So it's, it's just my CCAP of myself shows five different charges, mostly just two things of paternity, um, a charge dating back all the way to when I was late years of high school, 17 years old, um, a small claim to Kelly Bigelow, and an OAR, OAR, so it's simple driving citation. That's all I found under CCAP is my name. And then as far as Green Bay goes, in the last eight years itself, I haven't had anything more than just a simple driving offenses and even in those three of those subsequent driving offenses there was no other additional concerns in regards to like anything else that they had denied me for in the potential license itself so like I said I'm still just wondering where this felony conviction is if you guys got no, citation that's, that's number the felony one. says it comes from Shano but Shano you, you've good, done the work and, and that's uh, like I said just as long as I can see a citation number statements made by police officers anything so that way if, if there's something I need to do to go correct the situation I could also take that you know even if it's past this point here just for you know my life in general right that's the only felony felony so this is the one in shadow I mean, it's it's misdemeanors, so I mean, we would not we would not hold up this license so that. in the criminal background report that we ran in 2005 we have an arrest the Shawano Police Department for an OWI um, the court the charging court was Shawano Municipal Court OWI charge severity felony convicted hmm. disposition date November 10th 2005 and I have it for Roberto Robaletto date of birth 4-18-1985, Apple. Is there a possibility that, uh, you know, you go, you go to that site and you can see things, but, you know, things are this updated? This is not a website. This is, the, like, a criminal background the criminal report background that's run check. by PD. So this isn't available yeah. to the public. public okay. and, and sometimes <coughs> things that are on the CIB don't necessarily show up in CCAP. Oh, okay. Have you, oh, if I may, uh, have you been bartending for? Um, <coughs> I have recently I've been bartending, and then prior to, I spent a little bit of time over at Bourbon Street um, Pub and Grill serving um, for two years there. And then not only that, during that time and for the last nine years, I've been working in Pub and Grills, mostly managing kitchens. Um, so in the environment, I'm well aware of you know what goes on, <coughs> things like that. Um, I've also had um, serve safe certifications with inside of the kitchen and also passed the bartending courses too yet. Uh, usually make my way into management just through hard work and yep. do what I gotta do. I was just gonna ask her, do you have any letters from anybody? Any bosses or people that? <coughs> I do not. Um, being that I am currently working at two different bars, I didn't wanna bring up concern with bar owners that I may not be an employee for them. Um, you know, obviously, as I'm still trying to obtain the license, so. Right. Um, <coughs> that's all I have right now. Any other questions? So basically, the last few years, you haven't had any problems? Over eight years, I've only had driver citations. Yeah. Can our attorney verify that? Is that true, ma'am? Well. Yeah, it, it appears the last violation was in 2007. Which is a while. Yes. Uh, yeah. And there have been times in the past when we uh, looked at a felony conviction and said that it happened so long ago we no longer feel it's relevant. Mm -hmm. 
I'd still just like to see it because right. I, I, I can't recall. I mean, normally on an OWI, don't you have to do an AOD assessment, interlock device, any of that? That was never forced upon me. So you, know, you know, nothing. So so you're not old, you don't remember I, this I, event? I don't, I don't. I never had one. I've oh, never. Okay. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, the only citations I've ever had within Shawano County was uh, prohibited alcohol content, driving without a license, and underage drinking, and then one other thing, but no OWI felony, anything. All so those prohibited alcohol content. When you go to court, you receive the OWI citation and the prohibited alcohol content citation, and the courts or the city attorney or DA can plea bargain where one gets dropped and you're convicted of the other one. So the prohibitive alcohol concentration is essentially an OWI citation. Sometimes attorneys or the district attorney does that. I believe it might help you on your car insurance where it won't get jacked up as yeah, much. Yeah, that, that's another thing that's it's never showed up on. Yeah, so that's why sometimes a district attorney will plea bargain that. But when we write an OWI, when we get the blood results back, we automatically have to write the prohibitive alcohol concentration citation. When they go to court, the judge will either drop one or the district attorney or city attorney <coughs> will have you plead to one and then automatically <coughs> drop the other. Okay. So you get, can get that if you're 15 years old and drinking? Yeah. So sure. yeah. Well, the, that's but the prohibitive alcohol is if you're above, well, now 0.08 back then, I believe it was 0.0. The absolute sobriety is if, like, say you were 15 years old and you had one beer, so you have a little alcohol. The prohibitive alcohol concentration is you were over the legal limit. Back then it was 0 0.10, so you're over the legal limit of 0 0.10. So how old were you then? I believe I was either 19 or 20 years old, so I mean the legal limit at that point was 0 0.00. 0 0.10? What happens is even if you're under 21, if we pull you over and we detect the odor of alcohol and it comes back that you're 0 0.02, at that point we give you the um, prohibitive alcohol concentration, which is essentially for anyone under 21 that didn't hit the 0 0.10. But even if you're under the age of 21, if you're above the legal threshold, you will still get the prohibitive alcohol concentration instead of the absolute sobriety one, because even if you were 21, you, that's what you would have received, because the uh, citation for the prohibitive alcohol is a lot higher than the absolute sobriety one. <coughs> Any other well, questions for? No, I, I'm actually I'm loving the information as well because nobody else has given me anything right, like that. So I, 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 any, I have nothing for more. Uh, anything else you care to say? Um, not really. I just really think um, showing that for the most part my criminal history was in an eight-year period when I was relatively young and actually had come out of jail off of probation and stuff and. At the same time, that might have almost been like a criminal education course, but yet after that, making very many mistakes and having a family, now two kids, that after the subsequent eight years has shown that I am, you know, really ready to be a normal citizen, father of my children, <coughs> and hopefully a business owner someday too at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Earl Stoyer. Second. Second by Earl Stevens. I feel, <coughs> I feel good about this. I feel that we can move forward. Oh, well, we got what? We just closed it. We just closed it. I thought we did. Oh, we didn't vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all against? Okay. I, yeah. I'm, I'm so the I'm floor is closed. Approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Yeah, I think even if there weren't any confusion on this, it still happened quite a while ago that. I don't think it's relative anymore. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck. How do I go about it? It's still state council. No, this is. Well, oh, that's that's final. We're final. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's final. We're final. Yep. All right. Yep. Cool. Next one is on. All right. Yeah, we're we've got the home for it. Next one will close. Yep. Yep. We're probably going to close that. Okay. I'll read it out. Um, I'll wait till she's ready. Yep. Okay. Number 13, consideration of possible action on appeal by Elizabeth Perrine regarding the denial of our operator license. The Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final approval authority on liquor licenses related matters until October 1st, 2019. 
I believe <coughs> uh, I would like to close of mm -hmm. uh, going to close session. Mm -hmm. uh, for all licensing issues, the committee may potentially convene a closed session pursuant to 19.85's subsection L. Is that I? B, subsection B, and or uh, uh, chapter 19.85, subsection L, uh, subsection F, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of considering information with respect to licensing for a person. The applicant has the right to demand that the meeting be held in open session. The applicant may also request that the meeting be held in closed session, which is what has just happened. The committee may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to 19.85, subsection 2, Wisconsin statutes, report any actions taken during the closed session and to consider all other matters on the agenda. Uh, so, motion. 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 motion to go into closed session. Uh, motion by Alder Sorry to go into closed session. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we now in closed session. So anyone who does not have um, involved with this should leave the room, please, for this item. Everyone's here for this item? Just one. <laughs> Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yep. We are now in open session. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will take a motion. Motion to approve the operator license. For motion to approve the operator license uh, by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. It's official. We did it in open session now. So. And this, this doesn't go to council. Nope, this goes to court council. We have the final authority. So, good luck. Good luck. Work hard. Thank you. Thank you. What's the establishment? Can I ask you where you're at? Where are you at? The, the work, the business? Dad's Wine and Spirits. What's it called? Dad's Wine and Spirits on University. On University. 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 Okay, thank you. Come on in, okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> no, no special, we can't. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 thanks, right. anyhow. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really All right. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're on the record. We can't take it. No, you're on the record. You're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay, item 14. Yes. Consideration was possible action by Alder Weary, which states to request a report of police call volume on Western Avenue from Oneida to Taylor. What addresses our habitual problems? Have nuisance plans and bills for service been issued? Develop a plan moving forward to reduce the number of police calls to this area. Previously held at the May 13th Protection and Policy Meeting. Staff. Um, our crime analyst, Michelle Belangi, prepared a report, I believe it's in your packet. Um, it shows she went from January 1st, 2018 to just about a week ago, June 5th of 2019. Um, she prepared the report on all their Weary's guidelines. Um, as you can see, we do have one chronic nuisance address. We have not billed as of yet. Um, we're working with the community police officer in that district. Um, due to retirements, we are only down to one officer and staffing levels, one community police officer out in that district. Um, he is working with the owner to address the problems. Um, you see some of the high volume calls and parcels for service <laughs> that some of them seem excessive. Um, not all of them result in a qualifying call. If there was a rescue squad call there or if there was, you know, a, a runaway or found property in our system that shows up as a call, but it doesn't necessarily <coughs> mean it's a qualifying call. Um, if you like, I could explain what constitutes a qualifying call that they would become a nuisance property. Um, we are, as community police, very proactive with our um, rental owners, the landlords, the property owners, um, to work with them to solve the problems. So I don't want it to seem that the, because I even asked the um, Charles and Marilyn Perry, they pop up four times on there. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not working with us. They hire a property manager that is working with us, that some of these calls can be where the tenant's actually calling or someone 
from the property is actually calling when there's an issue, which is what we want instead of not calling us and um, not working to solve the issue with us. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lieutenant, I was just, okay, so you have 154 calls. Are you looking at number one? 1421 Correct. 1435 Western Avenue? Yes. And you said a lot of them are, you know, what have you, as you just described, but out of the 154, is there a way to tell us how many are truly relevant to we to We would have to go. You'd have to go through it. We'd all. have to go through because that property is technically 1421 through 1435 and those are apartments so each apart each building could have say eight apartments in it so we would have to go through each and every call to say okay this one was a qualifier this one was a disturbance or something that's considered more criminal in nature as opposed to say a, a 911 hang up or right. <coughs> you think Walter Weary was kind of looking for that, though? I thought maybe he he wanted a little more. Yeah. I know I, he just kind of stated. Yeah, he gave broad. It was too kind of broad. Statement. Kind of broad, so okay. um, we we can't dig through all that data if you would like. I, I do know habitually coming off night shift Western Avenue, we, we do know was when I work nights at time that we were there more frequent. Um, we are trying to work with the property owners, um, counseling them, educating them, helping them uh, screen their tenants. Um, so we, we could work with them um, to get good tenants in their properties. Okay, so I have now. Questions for staff? Okay, well, yeah, I can open the floor. If there's Joe, thought, any questions more for staff, then we'll open the floor. Motion is open on the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Evangelist. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The floor is now open. Can you state your name and address for the record. Uh, Janet Angus, 1403 Shirley Street in Ring Bay. Um, I live about two blocks away from Western Avenue on the corner of Shirley Street and Locust. Um, my neighbors and I, my neighbors are not here today, Alderman Vanderlees was kind enough to come to a meeting uh, with the police department with my a few of my neighbors and myself about, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks ago because we have concerns. And our concerns are that the crime is now spilling over onto Shirley Street from Western Avenue. <coughs> um, the thing that broke the camel's back, so to speak, was the taser incident in which someone was killed in the backyard of Aaron and Matt. They have two ch small children, and uh, this man was going up and down our street, banging on doors, frothing at the mouth, uh, trying to rob people. He um, ended up in front of uh, Scott Wagner's home with a grill top in one hand, pounding on a door, trying to break through their window. And that's what would, you were listening to them tell the story, that's what you would hear. He then ended up going across the street into Matt and Aaron's backyard, where he was tasered a number of times, climbed up on the roof, must have been high on drugs, I don't know what the final report says, I haven't had access to that. He was tasered, he ended up dead in the backyard of Aaron. And Aaron, I babysat, when she was a little girl, I was probably 12. These are long-term neighbors we have on our street. We've had police officers running up and down the street in the last couple of years chasing people who are armed robbers with backpacks. We've had armed robbers found underneath canoes in people's backyards by dogs, sniff the dogs that, that go off and sniff and try to find dogs. We've had um, <coughs> Pyro the dog was stabbed on the corner of Locust and Western, two blocks from my house. We had um, drug deals in Colburn Park happen. We were talking about putting a gate up to stop, you know, to stop cars from going down into there in the evenings. But two weeks ago, I think it was on May 22nd, the girl was found with a heroin needle in her arm, passed out, the police were called, she recovered, she left, 
the, the scene. I guess, I don't know if she was ticketed or what happened to her, but she left. And here there were young children. It was 8 o'clock at night and there were kids at the pool. People watching her, <coughs> taking a hit in the park. So what happened to her? Did she get a ticket? If she'd have been drinking alcohol, <coughs> I'm sure she would have gotten some kind of a municipal ordinance violation. Crapping open beer or something in the park. I don't know if she was ticketed. I don't know what happened. But I know I have a lot of questions. And I know that I don't like what's going on in my neighborhood. And if I don't come here and tell you people about it, and work with Alderman Vanderlees, thank goodness for Alderman Vanderlees, nothing is going to change. Now, I did a Freedom of Information request, and I stood in front of the, the um, Redevelopment Authority and that I was happy NeighborWorks was taking over the Admiral Court apartment buildings because there's a lot of crime. The armadillo is there all the time, parked on Admiral Court. A few years ago, I had a lady who came in my office and she'd been beaten on Admiral Court. <coughs> beaten. Right next to Mason Manor. <coughs> That's why I got involved in politics in 2014 because of a crime in my neighborhood. I don't know if you guys realize that or not. But that's why I put my foot down. I came and I talked to Jim Schmidt about it, told him we needed to spend some more money on, on uh, redevelopment areas outside of the downtown. And he put on his coat and walked out of his office. It was very disrespectful to me. And I think you people know the rest of the story of what happened to Jim Schmidt. He should have worked with our neighborhood a little bit more. It was disgusting. There was a meth lab over there. and Someone died from an overdose in the Admiral Court apartment building. This was in 2014, and this is when I got involved. I decided if I was going to complain, I should be involved and do my due diligence rather than just complain and do nothing. And I think, as you're all well aware, I own a lot of property over in that <coughs> neighborhood, and I don't think it's safe anymore. So I did a Freedom of Information request, and it resulted in 282 calls being made to the Admiral Court apartment buildings. These included calls for drugs, weapons, disturbances, welfare checks, thefts, truancy, missing persons, juveniles, crime prevention, burglary, violation of court orders, harassment, and sex offenses. And that's what I found when I went through all of them. And it's the only way to get the information. You have to go through each individual reason for why they are going to the location. I can't get information any other way than that. And doing freedom of information requests, as you're probably well aware, are very time consuming and expensive. I get charged by the page, <coughs> and I have to go back time and time again to get the information. Which is why I think it's imperative on this committee to do a study, to find out, you know, rather than just saying, well, the data doesn't support it. The data doesn't support it. You know, a lot of these calls are just for, um, you know, welfare checks or there's a little bit of a little disturbance or what. How do I know that? When I went through it, I found, as I said, weapons disturbances, thefts, truancy. We had a rash of, uh, we had a rash of, rash of car thefts on Shirley Street last summer. <coughs> Our cars were all broken into. So the armadillos parked over at the Admiral Court apartment buildings, was parked down on Meacham Street because there were a lot of crime thefts over on Meacham. And that's a spillover also from that what I, I talked to the neighbors. They think it's a spillover from Western Avenue. So, my question is, a couple of things. When are we going to have some accountability with our ordinance for nuisance homes, nuisance properties? <coughs> there were 19, 2018, 19 citations were issued and only six bills of service. And in 2017, there were 15 citations issued and four bills of service. So in 2018, with almost 300 calls to the Admiral Court apartment buildings, no one was held accountable. Now, Neighbors Works, I think, is cleaning it up, which is a wonderful thing, I think. We'll see what happens. But some, if this happens in neighborhoods, it's terrible. Your property values go down. People are afraid to go out at night. I was talking to a girl. I mean, I won't go into all of it. but. But people are afraid. It's gotten to be a very violent neighborhood. 
and I think I think we need to look at it. I think we need our 14 police officers put back on. I think that Admiral Court, Neighbor Works, I think they're here, they were so kind to offer to have a, um, an apartment to be used as a neighborhood policing officer office place. We don't have a staff to staff it. And they'll say, oh, crime's going down. But I don't believe it. I think the definition of what, I, I don't know the difference, you know, but when I talk to them, I get a bunch of gobbledygook. And when the definition of the crime changes, assault, battery, oh, and remember, none of the drug violation crimes are, in, are, are combined into that information that's sent to the state. And if you look at our drug, our drug crimes, I think they have over doubled in the last year. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. I have the numbers. If you want me to look for them, I will. Yeah, but um, the numbers are up. Um, I know that we're told the numbers are down, but when you see the police officers chasing people up and down the back streets of your neighborhood, um, I just don't think it's uh, a good thing. Yeah. If I can ask Janet, thank you for coming in. I, uh, you know, We're looking at Western Avenue from Oneida to Taylor, and you're just saying, because of what you feel that's happening on Western, that it's spilling over into your neighborhood. Western that's Admiral Court, um, I think what is it, Leo Street? That that whole there's a lot of <coughs> apartment buildings in that area. Look at what Ash Wabin had to do with their problem. They tore the buildings down, rebuilt them. I mean, if if landlords aren't going to take care of their buildings and aren't going to run to people that are going to cause, I mean, it's, it's not good for the community. Well, I did. Well, I, I'll have to talk to the tenant about that. Um, just to make the committee aware. Uh, we need to have we that. Open. We have to have it. We open. have to have it open. We have to have it open. Just tell them to keep it down. Um, our, our crime analyst did prepare a report for Miss Angus, and we have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday. That does include the Colburn Park area that is for concern. Mm -hmm. That's why some of these numbers might be different. They somewhat mirror each other, but since the agenda with Alder Weary was asking for this data, that's why we compiled that for the committee. And that's why Admiral Court's not included in this, or of course Colvin Park, that's not included in this, uh, because we went by what the request was. We do have a meeting, I believe scheduled Wednesday afternoon, um, where we're gonna sit down and we have the report prepared for uh, Ms. Angus, where we are, we want to address the problems. We realize that, yes, as a police, yeah, we could say crime is down and we could show crime is down, but if that perception isn't what the public is seeing, then we could work with them to come up with solutions as a whole, um, that the police could work with the community and the neighbors to figure out ways to solve the issue. <coughs> well, I'll give you an example. For mar possession of marijuana, possession of opium and cocaine, and other dangerous drugs, in 2017, when you add everything up, it was 623 cases. We're up to 833 in 2018. I got this from the Department of Justice with the state of Wisconsin, <coughs> these numbers. Four. I think they're actually what are reported by the city um, to them. And, and I, I have no reason to doubt the stats. I just know what's happening in my neighborhood. And, you know, having somebody get tasered and die three or four houses from where you live after you've had pyro of a dog two blocks from where you are, a gunshot wound at the Mason Street gas station, kitty corner, I think, from the CVS store, it goes on and on. So is there, in your estimation, a lot, you know, as far as Colbert Park, is there a lot of activity going on there as well? Um, do you know of? I think there's yeah. homeless people. I think there are... Um, there's drug deals going on. I can't say for sure that I've seen a drug deal going on because I wasn't partaking with it. Right. But when you see people going in and out of the park and you watch what's happening, I mean, there's a red car that pulls in by the where the bathrooms are for the soccer field. And the people have said that that car, you know, it goes on and on with what the neighbors are seeing. And when people's windows for their kitchen, they have coffee looks out over the park and you see some of this behavior going on back there, you have to question how what's going on. You know, I mean last year I had homeless people using my water my water faucets on my house. And you know, 
they live in the park in the summer. I guess the park is open to everybody, but you know, I mean, <coughs> and, and like I said, the heroin needle, what, May 22nd, the young girl with the heroin needle in her arm at the park, 8 o'clock at night. You kind of, you know, wonder what's happening in the neighborhood. So, like I said, we need our 14 police officers back. Whatever you can do to get these, to get more police officers so we have boots on the ground and people are, are you know, no. I mean, when Father Rico wanted to have his house, you made him put security cameras on the house, I think. There was all this stuff going on and on about Father Rico. I was at that meeting. I think, isn't that his name? Is it Father Rico? Pastor. Right. Pastor. Pastor Rico, excuse me. But, you know, maybe that's what we need to do with Mason Manor. It's a city-owned facility. They have to have security cameras on there. You know, what's going on with the security cameras in Admiral Court? Why do we have so much crime in Admiral Court apartment buildings? I mean, Neighbor Works hasn't had a, a shot at it yet, I will say that much. But this has been going on to the point where I noticed it since 2013. And thank goodness, Neighbor Works bought it and is attempting to change that in our neighborhood, and I hope it works. But if it doesn't, you know, what, and then what are we going to do with all the other properties on Western Avenue? I mean, you still have the numbers. I find it very hard, and, and you know, there's 453 calls going to the Perry's property when I added them up. That's a lot of police force being used up to, to go and make calls, whatever, they're, whatever the calls are for. <coughs> That's a lot of money and a lot of time spent by our officers going to do welfare checks. I mean, it, I, I just find it hard to believe. People want, listen to the scanners and it's either, what is it, Imperial Lane on the east side? And, mm -hmm. Western and Admiral Court on the west side. So, you're the Protection and Welfare Committee. Protect us. Do something with our police officers. Put more money into it. Get boots on the ground. I want to live in a safe, nice area. Good schools, safety, nice place to live. That's what Green Bay, Wisconsin is about. That's the Green Bay, Wisconsin I've known for 59 years. I've lived in that house since I was seven years old. We never had this kind of crime before. And it's getting worse. So, I don't know. If the data doesn't support it, who am I to say that the data doesn't support it? But statistics and numbers can be manipulated. It's like the Attorney General's office, you know, we don't report our heroin and our marijuana possession and our drug possessions, I don't believe, to the state. Those numbers don't go into it. So is crime up or is crime down? Crime went up as far as drug possessions went in Green Bay last year. And what are we doing about it? What are we doing about it as a community? A little girl, I mean, little, she was in her 20s, I believe, had her heroin needle in her arm in Coburn Park. What does that say about what's going on in our society? Don't close your eyes. My dad had a whole bunch of needles left over when he when he, uh, when he passed away. Thousands of them. He bought too many needles to give shots. And he was a doctor. I took them down to the AIDS clinic and donated them all. And they were happy to get them because they had run out. Because the drug problem in our city was that bad and that was probably in 2015. And I don't think it's gotten any better. So educate. But you have to put the money in the right spots. And I think we're all on the same page, you know? Well, I, I can't disagree, Janet, as far as the police action as a budget item, but, you know, we had a, <laughs> everything was tight. But I understand, you know, we hear you, oh. so I, we have to get creative. <coughs> well, it's not only being creative, it's putting your priorities right. where your well, priorities, where I think they should be. Right. You know, where are your priorities? Safety, education, nice place to live, roads, infrastructure. <coughs> but you're about safety. So I hope you listen because if not, I'll be back to remind you. <laughs> All right, thank you for your time. Your purse. Your purse. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Taking us off. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Otto Stoyer. Second.
Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Certainly. Yeah, I can see that the uh, drug arrests have gone up and that the total arrests have, uh, they've taken a dip since last year, but they're still up from 2014. So uh, my only concern is, uh, I think this is a multiple faceted issue. I think there are homeless issues, which doesn't have to do with Western. I mean, that's a separate issue. Uh, and some that's going, some, some of the stuff's going on. It's thought it comes from Western. We don't know how much that's true or not. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to look at what's going on and address it, whether it's Western, homelessness, whatever. And uh, yeah, law enforcement, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have law enforcement. It, but it's not only a budgetary issue. If we had the money right now, we would not have the applicants to fill it. It's a training and recruitment issue as well that we've been having for a few years. Uh, which is one reason why we've been feeling comfortable of not fully funding the police department because they can't fill the applicants anyway. Uh, but yes, it's something we need to, to work on both ways, budgetary and, <coughs> and recruitment. Uh, I think, you know, you're going to be meeting. I'd like to know what happens after that meeting. We get some kind of report. Where is that meeting at? Oh, it will be at the police department. I believe it's 3 o'clock on Wednesday. This, this Wednesday? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll attend. Yeah, I'll try to get there. I got okay. sustainability That's at five. Oh no, five thirty. You changed. Oh, right. So that might work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. Yep. And you know, the opioid crisis. I mean, that we're not the only community that's suffering from that, but definitely. And and this is going to be more than just a Green Bay solution, especially when it comes to drugs. That's going to include Brown County Brown Drug County Task Force and course. others. We need to. I think this is a multifaceted problem. It's going to need multiple uh, solutions and players involved to really tackle it. Uh, so hopefully we can, after this meeting, we can uh, get that data down firmly and start problem solving what we can do and who can do it and who, who needs to do what and step and go forward. Yep. I was going to ask, thanks again, Janet, for all your testimony. Um, Lieutenant, I'm still interested in you know, I don't know how difficult that would be before Wednesday to kind of look at all these calls and see which ones are really truly relevant as far as, you know, some of the more serious crimes. Would that, would that take a lot? Um, I could ask Michelle, our crime analyst. Just, tomorrow. even if, just, it doesn't have to be exact, exact. No. But if, if we could get a handle like, you know, 70% of these or whatever, I, I would like to have a little better, that would be more hardened crimes, I guess, whatever you can do with that. I, I am uh, happy that NeighborWorks is coming in the Admiral Court. I think that's a good start. Uh, like, it's, like you mentioned about Pastor Rico, you know, with the security cameras, we put in conditional use. We, we made sure that that was taken care of at that establishment, and I think that'll help tremendously. I just want to make sure that maybe in the neighborhood, that various places, if there are security cameras in place, I'm not sure at apartment complexes how much of that is there or not. I don't know if we have any authority on that. Well, maybe that, that I'm not sure. I do know they're currently in use at another park in Green Bay, Ken Ayers, 
but we have purchased portable um, kind of not where you need a Wi-Fi we've purchased portable cameras that we're going to start moving around so if there's an issue like this at Colburn Park instead of the co and we're looking to purchase more instead of having to run Wi-Fi or wiring and all that or because everyone seems to spot our deer cams or whatever that that's an option that we're going to do so we can track either vehicles or people that are coming in or out of the park yeah. well whatever we can do yeah. 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 okay that's all I have yeah. so uh, a motion to uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, well we see well I don't know how about well, how, as far uh, as a reaction. Gonna, I'd like a we're gonna have the meeting. We're gonna, I'd like a report back on that meeting. Um, so can hold, we hold, 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 hold this hold for our next after meeting. That. Yeah, I would. I would for, make and get further <coughs> Well, would you like uh, to let the committee know I won't be here on the twenty fourth? Another community police officer yeah. will step in. So I, I, I would think not the twenty fourth, not not the special, right. our regular health meeting July. next month. So okay. motion to hold and further report from. Front, now, are we looking just Western Lane right now, or are we going to be looking for the general west side area? You know, I, I don't know. Well, I think we can include that because that's going to be what's reported Wednesday, and I'd like to include that uh, with this. I think yes, it's it's related. It's all yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be good with that. So, all this to, to our next regularly scheduled, scheduled meeting, meeting. Mm -hmm. and then report back. Yep. I'll make a motion to that effect. Motion by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Van Alist. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, 15. Consideration of possible action request by Alder Gavlin to the Protection and Policy Committee to have a procedure for Alders to be notified with pe when petitions and communications are going to be addressed at the committee level. Uh, staff? With that? Um, I, I think we would need another clarification from Alder Galvin as to what he's looking for. Um, I know we had a. Um, it looks like Alder Dorf. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Alder Dorf. Alder Galvin couldn't be here. Um, so he, this he's is what, two weeks. Yes, yeah, so this is what he's asking. Um, he didn't want the item held. He said he just wanted all alders to be notified by email as to what meeting their communication will be heard at um, and if it isn't addressed by six months due to staff working on it or it being put aside due to the workload they all to be notified again so he isn't bugging staff all the time mm -hmm. okay so my understanding is that when a communication is put in um, by an alder at council it's immediately put on the agenda for the next meeting sometimes uh, right. It's I, sometimes. sometimes. I think okay. if I can say something. Not always. Okay. Sorry. I mean, I, and I agree. I mean, I there have been communications that I feel that have been lost over time or just kind of pitter away. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, how about reporting back, like, I don't know, every two weeks, like not two weeks, but let's say a month, three months, six months? I don't know. I'm just looking at, it, it, unless it's handled. I think it, I know every supporting secretary and department yes. that handles their, their committees does it differently. I know Jamie keeps a running list of communications and referrals and checks back with law department or whoever periodically like where are we with this? Do we are this going is this going back on the agenda? I don't know how other reporting secretaries handle it. Um, but my okay. understanding is that is what the process is supposed to be. Could could <coughs> yes. that just be included as a report? Just print it out and report it uh, to this committee every month or every session? By every month. Well, well what about to at least to the Alder? I think Alder Gavin is talking about not just this committee, but. Right, but if, if it's reported on this, sure. if we have a report of all the communications that have been made and where they're going, would that, I mean, that document already exists, correct? Well, sort of, oh the no, communication okay. goes Those to oh where no, no. it's, okay. it's right. being directed. So if an alder is requesting okay. to traffic and bicycle commission for them to look into something, it's it's going to that particular committee or commission, and it's supposed to be pl placed on the next agenda meeting. Yeah. 
and yep. then the committee then at that at that point sorry decides where like if it's going to go to staff right. or if they're holding it or if right. they're referring it to this yep. person or that person yep. and then it's the, the department's responsibility mm -hmm. the reporting secretary to follow up and make sure that that comes back on the agenda if it is being referred to staff the staff is working on it then it comes back when staff has completed work on it okay so i believe that as an alder I have a responsibility to follow through on my own communications. I don't disagree with um, Alder Galvin that it, it you know would be nice to know but I don't think he should be concerned about bugging someone mm -hmm. as to whether or not it's going to be on the agenda. That should be our responsibility as an alder. If we see that something's not on an agenda then I think it's okay. I don't really feel like it's bugging. I so I have a so here's Alder Galvin. I read what he said, but here's me. <laughs> I think, um, no, I think you're on the other side. Yeah, uh, I'm. You know, I just think we have a responsibility to Follow find out what happened to it, and not as he said, he didn't want to bug someone. But don't don't have to worry about that. We have to find out what happened to our communication. Yeah, but I, I I don't know how staff. If staff somehow loses the communication, how are they going to know they lose it? I mean, yeah, that's a, really I, true too. I, I mean, we're asking. I mean, if somehow there's a mistake, somehow they may catch it, but they may not. It's really on us to really. Maybe well, he does need to be here himself. Yeah. <laughs> he just texted me. Well, I think there's an amount of trust. There's an amount of trust that you know when I put a communication in, like well, we send it to staff, and my feeling is they'll it'll be taken care of. But right. every once in a while, somebody will say, "Hey, Alder, what happened to that one?" And I like. Hmm. Yeah. If I don't keep track of it, like maybe I should. Yep. You know, that's, I, I that's part of it. I understand, but uh, I still would still think that if communications are brought forth to the city, that there be a spreadsheet or something out there with with the record of that. Celestine. Um. So, have you used the search function in Civic Clerk? No. In uh, even on the website to find out. So if you, I'm just in there right now. Um, so the clerk is actually really powerful, and once the agenda is published, so it isn't not done until the agenda is published and the communication isn't on there. And so once that once that um, agenda is published, you could do a search right there in mm -hmm. on the website and find it through communication. Or and not. Then what right, it'll take it to the committee. Goes to and yep. then in the clerk, you can. I'm not sure exactly what access you all have. I think you have some <coughs> capability in civic you know, and I think what Alder Galvin's trying to get at is just sort of that, that tracking process for how these things move through the system. And I think there's one area that just as a, as a newer Alder that I would allude to that, I mean, I've submitted obviously many communications since I've been here, but I don't know that I'm doing it properly. And when you go back to one of the communications, and here's the irony of this, that I submitted about creating a new, like an orientation program for new Alders. I'm not sure what the status of that is yeah. any longer. It's not on a committee agenda any longer. And I think this needs to be one of those things that's addressed in there. Do I send my communications to the department chair? Do I send them to the clerk? Do I send them to the committee chair? I don't know. I've heard that when you submit late communications, sometimes there's a fee that we pay for that. Yeah, we do. I've heard that. I don't know if that's true. I think that should be known. So I think that there just needs to be <coughs> some greater clarity around how communications are submitted and then what that process is for tracking them through the funnel. Yeah. I, I would love to see where we don't do late communications because we do pay for that. So if there's a way we could organize ourselves as a body to put in communications as to the chair, to the, to the clerk's office, whatever, maybe figure out a way, a process that we can all agree upon. Yep, yep, yep. Um, that, uh, that might make things a lot easier and smoother perhaps, yes? So um, let us also think about a process that um, catches the mistakes when they happen, as opposed to creating something for when it's actually working. So um, we do have a new community relations assistant. Part of his job, Jared Vogel mm -hmm. part of his job is to work with the council. And um, if there is an issue, so for instance, I know about your orientation. Um, Communication that that's in personnel. It's, I've it's spoken being, to Joe. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, to being you. worked on. It's being created. So, but if you had a question about where that was, or you know, it's something that um, Jared and I can work on in terms of him actually tracking where things are. If things are taking a long time, 
then I can talk to him and talk to the mayor about reaching out to you to say, hey, by the way, we're all still working on this, but it's taking a long time. Or, you know, somehow it got lost in the ether, which it never does, but um, sometimes what happens is it goes to, to the committee and staff is working on it and it just takes some time. But I also am hearing that there has been, there have been instances where communication was proffered and then it never appeared on the committee agenda. Or at least well, not immediately. Well, <laughs> well, but it did, like, but what define, like, two meetings later, ten meetings well, later? Depends on the chair. The chair can decide if they, if they don't want the well, That's the other right. issue, too. So, you, and you, we have no control over that, and that's what happens mm -hmm. sometimes. But does that sound like, so like I said, I encourage you to go into civic clerk and look in, in the website, and then I can talk to Jared. I guess I need to follow up with that, too, here at this committee, but um, I can talk to Jared and see what we can come up with. Did you comment, Celestine, on the the fee for late communications? Yeah, that has to do with publication. Yeah. So. What is the fee? I don't know. I don't know what the fee is. I can't recall. I mean, there are times we're all putting. You know, we all have done that, putting late communications, and you know, part of the reason, let's say, I'll do it, and I know some of the others too, that to get it out there, people hear it. You know, some people say, "Why don't you just talk to us, talk to the departments ahead of time, and get that in." That's published inside the agenda, so mm -hmm. at least you see it. So I don't, I don't know. Some people like to state it at a meeting, so it's out there and people hear it and it's, it's uh, recorded as such. I don't know what you'd prefer. I mean, to me, you know, if we could just do all our communications ahead of time and just not have late communications, but sometimes things do come up. So I don't know. I think it's a good point of discussion. I don't know. Are Should we just do it ahead of time? List, are they listed? If you do, I, I mean, I've done them ahead of time, and they never show up anywhere. So that's kind of why I went back to doing well, the meetings. I mean, on the agenda, they'll it show they'll show communications. If you put in a it communication right. tomorrow, it should be it in should. the agenda. Yes. We're just talking mm -hmm. about whether we should Let me just, pull that just up. do all early communications and. Yeah, I we think I think early communications make more sense. And. Saves a little so money. I they were trying to save money, that's what would happen if we do it. Yep. I guess I wasn't fully aware of that. Yeah, every, so even late communication costs. On, uh, uh, well, I so people want to put in a late communication, something that's come up or whatever, I think that we should still be able to put in a communication. I well, agree certainly. You, 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 but not but to rely on that completely. Not to rely on that. And, and, and what does it hurt to wait one day? <laughs> Nothing. You could put it in the next day to the clerk or whoever, because it's not no action is going to take in that night. So you could wait, do it the next day to the clerk or the chair. Then no one knows about and well, it. then no one knows about it. But you know about it when it's on the committee agenda. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we need to? Do we need to? Do we need to make it a public? I mean, if you want to well, teach your horn that you're doing something. No, it's more like the other alders that don't know about it. I would just well, there's a lot that uh, comes on an agenda all those don't know about. Right. I mean, how do we, there, most of the agenda we don't know about till we see the agenda. Mm -hmm. Unless you make every committee meeting. <laughs> and then, you know. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, until you look at the agenda. The agenda well, yeah, there's tons. So would you say, well, is that a possibility to just say, okay, let's try this. Let's do it early. Yeah. I, just make a, I don't even know if you make a But promise. should we make it, should we make it a communication to the chair, or should we make it a communication to the clerk and the clerk? Because not everything would go necessarily to one of the four standing or uh, six, five standing committees. It might go to planning. It might go to, um, you know. If you go to the clerk's office, other there, there's consistency there. At least the clerk can get it out to <coughs> all the department, right. all the chairs. Right. My feeling is if it went to clerk's office, would that that wouldn't be an excessive burden, would it? I mean, you might have 10 communications. Well, the, I think the clerk handles generally the yeah. bulk of them. The yeah. clerk is responsible for, for maintaining the agenda. I, I would opt for that. For the city, so. Send it to the clerk's office and get that to the chair or you know, get it to the chair. Yeah. We should get an online form, which I already have. But yeah. But that way you can just <laughs> attach it to an email, and then you don't even have to go in. You just put your communication, because most of my communications are not well, communications. Yeah, well, most of mine are just written in an email. I just put... I write them in an email, too. Yeah. The there's a lot of paper down there with the 
those communications in the mail room. It's like, do we need all that? <laughs> you know, there, there's a well, lot. We of could do, do it online. Now. I mean, yeah. do it via email. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, right. But I'm just saying we got mm -hmm. a lot of paper. Yeah, I agree. I'd like to cut back on the paper myself. So, should we make a motion <coughs> that way? A I motion mean, I, to. I would, how we I would, uh, to recommend to alders? I don't think we can force alders. I mean, uh, what are we doing here exactly? What? Uh, well, can we just make it a policy? A policy that we'll alders policy. will make put in communications to the clerk's office. That all communications should go through the clerk's office. That'll be our new policy. I don't think we want no. to do that. <laughs> Why not? What's all. Why not? Never say all. You never say never. What, what what communication would you do elsewhere? Go elsewhere. Think something that would come up at that night. Well, you well, so do it the next day. The next day. Do it, you can even day. do it right there to the uh, email the clerk. Or we'll give it to the clerk for the next night. day. Well, no, if you give it to her at night, she's got it's a late yeah. communication. Yeah. yeah. You can't give it to her that night. Nope. No. Late. Can't email her that. Yeah. Unless the meeting goes after midnight. Are you guys trying to actually solve the problem, or no. can you just refer this? We're looking at you. Come up for this staff. Well, I th I think if the policy, what do we think about the policy? Just making all communications to the clerk. No, we're just looking for your input too, because I I would just assume do that. Just go to the clerk. Just put in the communications to the clerk. It's consistent. A lot of times we have things that come up on the floor. And we want to put in a late communication. We want to have it addressed. I, I don't think we should do away with late communications. Uh, I think that Let's do per, it. it's, per, it's pertinent to our meetings. Office. Yeah, but why not wait till the <coughs> next day and just send it to the I'll clerk? I'll put a communication at the next council meeting to talk about communications. Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, this will cut. This will be reported out. And we can discuss it at okay. full council. Mm -hmm. Yes. We That's what we should do. We should all discuss all it at full council and get yeah. more input. Because. I, I well, still don't understand why we need that communication at the That is when not what the all the well, there, there's some the items that come up, and we're setting some of the finance or. Right, but you could just save it for the council the next day. Why does it have to be put in that night? The next That's day. That's what we're going to discuss. Yeah. Or the okay. email. <laughs> so then so the we would. Is the motion to adopt that policy and yep. then you can vote and then it can be taken up? That I don't. Yep. What, what, what policy? The, the policy is that all communications will go to the clerk's office. They do anyway. Eventually. That's where they end up anyway. Eventually. The clerk is responsible for the, putting the agenda together. I feel like we're just creating a policy yeah, for the sake of yeah, creating I a policy now. I think this is just what too, do you suggest? really too sudden. What I think do you we suggest? should prefer this to stay up. <laughs> I don't know that we need to take anything out there. I think I threw some stuff out there that, hey, these are some things to consider, and these are... I feel some things where people get a little bit conflicted sometimes. Well, right, look, but I, I, think, I think to look at staff to come up with a procedure to catch, I, I don't know, how, I don't even know how to say it. Um, well, I, I think we should wait till Alder Gallon is really here. So we really, really, really know what he needs. Yeah, it's not time sensitive. Why don't we receive in place on file for right now or, 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 or hold it till to the next meeting? Hold it till Gavin can show. Well, even though I said you don't have to hold it, hold it. Because I didn't represent him well because I, have the, I don't have the same point of view at all. Well, so, so we can hold it. Motion, if you, your father wants to pull it, I I'll think. Second. I'll second it. Receive a place on file. I think we should well, hold determine well, how much well, this well, that's what it is. going on his. We should get all the Ask information. Ask him on his motion. Yep. Gather information. Banner list. We okay. also need to know what late, uh, what the cost is for late communication. Right. We need, to right. we need to gather information. Well, she's told us that. I forgot. I think it's, I don't know. But we can certainly get that. Yeah. yeah so we'll, so we'll hold this till hold our next scheduled meeting. And if we could get inf uh, further information on not only from Elder Galvin, but how much each late communication costs. That's all you want? I guess. And then we'll go from there, apparently. Okay. Uh, they don't want to try. Testing the waters on a policy. Maybe we should leave. You guys can do whatever you want. Well. So the motion was made by. Hold, may, hold by Alder Stevens with uh, getting added information of how much late communication is. Second. And seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're holding it. Just tell Alder Galvin. We're gonna hold it. <laughs> I will let him know. So yeah, don't call him. Get out to the car.
Right. Okay. Uh, we got to the next item. Mm -hmm. Liquor violation report from the public departments. I'm sorry, from the police department. Oh boy. What did you say? For June, I said public. From the police department for June 10th, 2019. Uh, we have nothing to report. Wow. Motion to receive. It's a safe committee. Motion to receive and place, receive and place on file by Alder yeah. Vanderlee. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is received and placed on file. Uh, I believe. Are we ready? Yes, we are. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by all the Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are done, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm leaving the <coughs> Now, make sure you leave the meeting. But she's, she's